1999 by Louis Schwetzer and Hannah Wassa. This is actually our first visit together outside of France or Japan. And we're quite excited to be here in India, a country that obviously has and will continue to have a major role in our organization in the future. To be very candid, our initial main purpose to be here together was to hold our monthly Alliance Operations Board after several visits in our common facilities. But we thought it would be appropriate to meet you and explain our plans in India in the wake of the press conference that was held in Paris last December. A few months after the Alliance reshaping, we have entered into new agreements between Renault and Nissan. We now apply a more flexible and local project-led approach, which allows for quick and agile decisions that suit regional requirements. We are obviously convinced that this approach will strengthen our long-term partnership and give our organizations much greater responsibility and autonomy. As you know, we have a very long history in India with two strong joint ventures, RNTBCI and RNAIPL, which were created with the aim of combining the best knowledge of our two companies to capitalize on the potential of this great country, India. India, halfway between France and Japan, will be more than ever, and not only for geographical reasons, at the heart of our alliance's operations. But let me return to a little history. Tamil Nadu was chosen for its dynamism and industrial opportunities. And it has proved to be a crucial location for approaching the Indian market and for exporting. It is India's second largest economy and home to over 130 Fortune 500 companies. And many of our competitors have also recognized the region's potential and have invested here. Tamil Nadu, as you know, is a key player in India's automotive industry, accounting for 45% of the country's auto exports and 35% of its auto component exports. It is also a major export hub for electronics, with the highest electronics exports in India. The region is also investing heavily in the future, with 22 of the top 100 Indian universities located here. As for the Alliance, we had already a great journey in India. Today, more than 1.4 million cars from our two companies are on India's roads. The majority of them developed and manufactured here with a localization ratio of over 90%. Our two joint ventures, RNAIPL and RNTBCI, employ already 15,000 members who contribute to the development of cars for the Indian market and for exports, as well as to key developments in high-tech domains and for global cars. India is not just a market. It is a vibrant ecosystem of limitless opportunities. Of course, it is not without its challenges, as it is one of the most dynamic, demanding, and fastest growing markets in the world. But by relying on the best cooperation with India and Tamil Nadu authorities, we are totally confident on our ability to navigate these challenges and continue to grow and thrive in this exciting market. Our future plans for the Alliance in India include, of course, the development of our lineups for Indian markets and for exports, but also the enhancement of new technologies, such as autonomous driving, connectivity, and electrification, for global markets. Ushida-san and Luca will explain our plans with all details.
In addition to our focus on technology, we are also committed to sustainable development and reducing our impact on the environment. We are working on initiatives to reduce our carbon footprint, increase the use of renewable energy, and use water sparingly. We are also committed to being a responsible corporate citizen and contributing to the communities in which we operate. We have a number of programs in place to support education, health, diversity, and inclusion, and community development. And we are always looking for ways to make a more positive impact. And what is happening here around this place is a perfect proof of what I'm just saying. We believe it is our responsibility to contribute to a cleaner, more sustainable future, and we are taking concrete steps to make this a reality. So in conclusion, we are really excited about the future of the Alliance in India and all the opportunities that lie ahead. We are committed to continuing to invest in this vibrant market and to working together with our partners, employees, and the community to create a better future for all. Now, clearly, I would like to turn the floor to the CEOs, first with Ujila San, who will share more about the, our plans in the future. Thank you very much. Ujila San. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanao. And uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is a pleasure to be here with Mr. Sanao and Luca. The Alliance remains committed to India and RNAPL is a great example. This plant built car for India and for the world, making it a global key asset for us. To date, this remarkable plant has produced over 2.7 million cars, which 1.2 million of them exported to more than 100 destinations. Additionally, it has also produced around 4.4 million powertrains. RNPL holds a significant place as it is a first dedicated plan of its kind globally. By incorporating the best manufacturing practices from both Renault and Nissan, this plant has become a hub of global expertise. One of the plant's key strengths lies in its unique production model. Its capacity and flexibilities allows for the production of numerous models, different platform, all on a single line. This facility is completely self-sufficient, covering all key activities for car assembly and the powertrain production, from stamping to assembly to end test trucks every aspect of the manufacturing process is carried out while within this plant area. We have invested more than $1.8 billion in this venture, which has had positive impact on the local economy. Close to 10,000 people have benefited from direct employment opportunities. Additionally, nearly 300 suppliers located in India produce parts and accessories for our productions and after sales, both locally and more than 20 countries worldwide. These investments, along with the industrial network we have established, serve as vital assets that we intend to build on. Although our plant is still young, its potential is great. In consistently changing automotive industry, Efficiency and competitiveness are crucial and most must always be improved upon. We are committed to further developing our manufacturing activities with the active involvement of our India teams and the support of national and local authorities. Now let us take out about the product that are currently being produced at our shared plant here. RNAPL is a home of Nissan Magnite and Renault Kiger driver car family born in here in India. Designed and developed 
and manufactured in Chennai. They are now exported to the rest of the world as strong proof to make in India, make for the world. These cars are based on the Renault CMF A and A plus platform, which was engineered by our Chennai team here. While they are manufacturing on the same production line and powered by the same power trains, these are delivered with a new and smarter brand differentiation. In the near future, this family will be expanded with the addition of new five-seater and seven-seater car for Nissan. You will have a flavor of this car in a few minutes. Furthermore, our teams are working to introduce alternative energy options such as compressed natural gas and compatibility with ethanol. All of our combined efforts in India will contribute to Nissan's business plan, the ARC, which we have just announced, as part of which India will be a hub for export at 100,000 units level for Nissan during the midterm. This is an example that we are efficiently leveraging our partnership with Renault while enhancing the value we provide to our customers in India. Before I hand over to Luca, let me conclude by saying that I'm very, very confident the best of the India into the alliance, into our cars beyond India. For the rest of the world, the best of India, this means competitiveness and frugality because this is the North Pole when you do cars. And this means also all the creativity and know-how that we find here in India. The second thing that is clear is that government support is going to be a key to make the story work. We need the authority to create the right business conditions. As I often say, automotive is a team sport. And I think this is also something our contact among the Indian authorities are well aware of. Thank you very much. Luca, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's also obviously a pleasure for me to, to be here with uh, actually a big uh, delegation of colleagues, uh, not only the ones that are sitting here behind the table from Japan and, uh, and, and from France. Um, I think uh, we are here to prove that uh, India will uh, play an increasingly important role in the alliance and each, each one of the companies. Um, I think we, we were amongst the first to believe in the potential of this market, and we still believe in it, so 17 years ago. Uh, you know, in the meantime, we also understood that uh, we can deliver. I mean, we are probably right now in a low point of our life cycle in, uh, in India, but we had, uh, you know, the opportunity to prove that we could uh, uh, be very successful uh, in this market. The other thing that uh, we learned is that, uh, and we are actually very proud of, is that we understood that uh, the team here at all levels has uh, a very high level of competence, okay? So we have a team that knows uh, what it's talking about, that knows how to do the job, and that, of course, gives us a huge advantage and this is a huge asset. I want to comment on you know, one of the parts of the team, which is LNTBCI. Uh, in the BCI, we're talking about 10,000 people. Uh, they are on top of the, I would say, the latest technology in the automotive business, from cloud engineering to, uh, you know, to artificial intelligence to autonomous car. Uh, and you know, we can clearly say and state that uh, these people are the forefront of those technology on a, on a global base. I would say. Uh, and they make our engineering center, and I just want to underline that, the, the top automotive tech center in the region, and I would say also among the best in our companies uh, global, both, both I guess from uh, Nissan side and, uh, and Renault. I, I, one of the things that we've been discussing is, is uh, obviously how NTBCI can be more and more connected to the rest of the activity that we do around the world. Uh, so extending its role beyond the borders of India, 
so they already already contribute to project and activity in Latin America, in Europe, but also in, in North America. I, I don't know if you know that. Uh, at the same time, um, it is also fair to say that uh, not everything is pink. Uh, India is not an easy market for OEMs, for sure. Very competitive. There are many challenges. A lot of car makers had to bite the dust. Uh, on our side, we've proven that we were not shy and that we were also ready to bet on India and work with all the stakeholders to, bo to build the favorable conditions. Uh, I think uh, today is, uh, and, and these you know, years are really a, t a turning point for, for us uh, as a company in general, but especially here in the engine market. We're coming up with big ambitions and uh, we also bring many things to make uh, the thing work. Uh, as I mentioned by Uchiha San, we are going to extend our lineup uh, to new segments uh, thanks to a new state of the art uh, platform that we will localize carrying four cars. There will be two five seater SUVs and two seven seater SUVs, two for each company. So Renault and Nissan. And uh, you can actually get a glimpse of uh, what five seater will look like uh, on, on these pictures on the, the, the front part of the car. So very modern, very advanced design and the technology. I, I let you the time to take the picture so everybody's happy. You, you have the time. Chop the lights for two minutes. Yeah. Chop the light. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure you can make work your imagination, but... Uh, lights on. I can guarantee that uh, we're trying to, you know, to to push very, very high in terms of uh, technology and product content. I know that uh, I know that uh, the question will come, but uh, so I anticipate it, like uh, on EVs. Uh, you know that the Alliance has been a pioneer and has the longest experience with this technology. We are actually rethinking entirely our strategy. Uh, we do that because we know it's crucial also here. And we want to come up with a plan that will be uh, pretty solid, effective, and sustainable. Uh, and for this uh, key, uh, uh, let's say, area, I think I go back on what uh, Uchiha San was saying at the end. Uh, we probably need, uh, you know, ecosystem and uh, and the public support uh, for to make it work in the, you know, to the transition to electrified, hybridized uh, vehicle. We we also want to develop. Uh, 360 up to serve Renault and Alliance global ambition, including the activities with the most uh, added value. Uh, for example, uh, our ambitions for NMTBCI is to become our one of the main center of excellence for digital, for artificial intelligence, for HMI, uh, for connectivity. I told you that uh, India is not easy place for us. Uh, this means for me two things. One is uh, if you manage to to be competitive here for the Indian customer and against uh, the Indian competitors that, by the way, we, we, have, uh, we have noticed that become stronger and stronger. It means that you have built a machine uh, that is very powerful and that you can use also outside of India. And this is uh, exactly what we want to do. We want to put, uh, uh, you know, emphasis on this and we are excited to see also Nissan, uh, you know, growing in India despite the challenges. Uh, we have a strong and motivated workforce, and uh, together with uh, Renault Nissan, uh, I think uh, we are ready to, you know, advance uh, with the alliance uh, in India. And I want to really thank you for taking taking the time to come uh, here today. Thank you, Luca. So um, I think um, if everybody agrees, it would be time for a Q and A session. So, um, you would lead perhaps the, the, the game? Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, so just setting the house rules, one question per publication first. We'll take Chennai Media first, then move to Outstation Media, and then Online Media, and we'll do the same cycle again. For, uh, for fairness, of course, uh, from Chennai Media, anybody? Bala, please go first. On the model launches, so how many new models are going to come up under each brand? And will there be common platforms like CMFA? Uh, could you please elaborate on those? So lines? what we announced today is a two and two. Two for, two for Nissan, two for Renault. 
uh, C-segment uh, five-seater and C-segment uh, uh, SUVs, or both SUVs, uh, seven-seater. Okay, same platform, new platform, CMFB, latest generation, localized, with a very high uh, level of uh, localization because it's, uh, it's very important. And we are working very, very hard, obviously, to increase uh, the percentage of localization because that's key for, you know, to make this product competitive here. Yes. Is that clear? And it doesn't mean that we stop, we will stop here. It means that this is what we announced today, okay? That this is where we are sure, uh, you know, we have the project, you know, in the, on the kitchen, on the grill, and we're working on that. Yeah. So as you initial localization. Yeah. yeah. So as you may be aware that we announced that in the alliance about where the area that we're going to put a lot of focus, knowing that the business circumstances is getting difficult, and the India is one, right? We know what happened in the past. As Luca said, that the market is very challenging. I know there's a huge potential that we can foresee. Then therefore we decided how we can come up with a competitive model, which in the alliance using the common platform and to have a fully localized and the fully the team here as we explained our and tvci and our and pl our and IPL is fully committed to do so and this is not only the uh, uh the, the the vehicle that we are talking about we want to further to enhance because we need to make ourselves to be present in the market especially for india then of course second step or simultaneously we want to think how we can utilize or leverage the strengths of the India from India to the outside. So these are the story that we wanted to come up here to explain to all of you. That is what the Alliance is going to further to put a lot of effort on in this country. Thank you very much. I mean, clearly consistent with what we said in December, but we didn't go into so many details at the time. So now you have them. Maybe I can add one thing yeah. to build on, 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 the, on, the, on the question. When we, when you try to localize everything, right, or most of, of the thing, which is, a must for those projects. It means that we are engineering the product there, here. Okay, so there is a lot. It's not only about sending a car and you know putting on the assembly line and and finding some suppliers, uh, you know, local. It's that we are trying to give. We're trying to give, take this opportunity to really um, make the local team, both Renault and Nissan, okay, uh, accountable for the development of the product and to make something that at the same time is perfectly suited to expectation of Indian customer, but also uh, so so good or good enough to be able to, you know, attract other customers around the, 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 let's say, the globe. This is, that's a very important for you to understand. It's a, it's a, a product, it's an engineering, it's a manufacturing, and of course, later a distribution uh, challenge, but it goes across the line. So just to clarify, if you can please introduce yourself before your question and also direct your question to the specific spokesperson you want the reply from. Uh, Nandini Sen Gupta, Times of India. Um, my question is that when the fresh investments into the Tamil Nadu plant uh, was announced last year, uh, the Alliance talked about six new products. So far you've just talked about four. Will the other two products be electric vehicles? We have the, let's say, we have the, um, the uh, let's say, as I said, we, today we announced four because we know exactly what we're talking about. We are working on finding solution. Regulation are changing, are becoming more strict. We have a few options to, cho to choose from, and we have to see if the thing works technically for us, but also we have to see if there are the right conditions to actually add another couple of products, uh, you know, to comply with the regulation and uh, if the frame of uh, enabling condition is good. Because, you know, in this race, for example, to EVs, okay, uh, you're not alone on the planet. <laughs> there are a lot of markets that want, you know, product localized into the thing. So that's a call also we are making. We, we, we have to find a way to be competitive and to find technical solution, but you, we also have to have in front you know, a system that enables us to have better conditions than other regions in the world. Is that clear? Yeah, so probably some of you may heard about uh, last Monday's announcement of the Nissan Midtown plan. 
uh, one year before and today, the market condition is totally different. So how we can fluidly adapt to the market speed and how much, as Lucas said, that we can give more delegation and authorization to the local team, local team who's aware about uh, what is happening in India. So we don't stop at what we have said today. We are working on the many opportunity uh, discussing between the alliance. And I think in this market, we need to have more opportunity that we have to build in order for us to grow. Our competition is quite tough, and we know so many good product is coming in. So how we can be competitively grow is going to be the key. For me, it's not just only the number of the models, how we can give this kind of value to be made in India and how we can make sure that our presence to be much higher in India it is one of the first, first priority. Why are we are here? And again, I would like to say that knowing that the India's competitiveness, how we can have those assets to be further to be exported on top of what we are planning for the India. I think those are the very important discussion. And as Lucas said, that we are considering what we can do for the electrification, which is next to ELA, that we have to face to it. So these are the, all the important discussions that we are taking to the place today. I guess uh, you all understand that we are eager to the future discussions we would have with the local and regional authorities to see how we can be, I would say, um, structurally helped in this progress. Um, but um, the, uh, the studies are, are going on very well. Thank you very much. Um, in next question, Aditi yeah. Shah, Reuters, uh, if you can please unmute yourself with tech support and ask your question, and we'll come back to the journalists in the room. Um, you hi, I have a, yes, hi, can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, I have a question each, um, one for Uchida-san. Um, just wanted to understand what impact will Nissan's partnership with Honda have on your alliance with Renault and Mitsubishi globally and in India? Uh, how will you finance the development of EVs under both the partnerships, given that you already also plan to invest in Renault's EV unit? And um, I have a question um, for Mr. Luca, uh, which is that um, you decided not to uh, list the Ampere unit right now, given the market conditions. Uh, does that change in any way, um, you know, what your partners will invest? So what Nissan and Mitsubishi will invest in the Ampere unit? Um, and when do you expect to receive this investment and what amount is it going to be? Thank you. <laughs> this is a question. There are two questions for Uchiha-san. Yeah, something like it. But yeah. We can start with them. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe I can just uh, confirm that uh, actually the reason why we decided not to list the Ampere is that the market condition was not there because you know there is a, there is a bit of a swing, sometimes unjustified, I believe, on, uh, you know, on the appetite for, you know, supporting uh, EV ventures uh, like uh, like Ampere is for me really probably the, bo the most solid uh, initiatives uh, in in, uh, in Europe um, and the other reason was I, Renault you know thanks God is doing pretty well so we had enough money to finance Ampere and that's why we decided that it was not right the right time to do it okay on the other hand I always confirmed and it's actually happening you know every day in our offices in our plants we that we would accelerate and we are even more and more convinced every week that uh, the ampere idea is actually a great idea and uh, you know you've seen uh, you have seen uh, Renault Scenic winning car of the year uh, is ampere car you have seen uh, the presentation of Renault 5 in Geneva absolute success of the thing so it is the best proof that uh, when you talk about ampere you talk about a very competent organization uh, a bunch of people that uh, know what they're talking about when it comes to EV uh, and software. So we keep going, we keep pushing, we are accelerating. And the most important thing is that we can get the cars out, that we can prove that in a couple of years we'll already be, you know, in, uh, you know, in, uh, in green numbers. Uh, and uh, Ampere accel accelerates. We, have in the, we are working on the Twingo as another additional car, very important car for, for Europe, uh, you know, small car below 20,000 euro. So I am, you know, spending a lot of time with the team, with the Ampere team, and uh, yeah. I'm very pleased from what's going on operationally on the, on the thing. Now, the other two questions are for uchida -san. Yeah, okay. So let, let me further elaborate that because I often get the same question. Yeah. Um, 
I hope many of you have listened to our midterm plan, uh, the ARC. I mean, if you look at the world today, the market is evolving at a different pace. One side due to the electrification, how we can strategically move that. Another side, we have those regulations that we have to cope with. So, you know, for the ampere, uh, for, for us it's very clear because we want to further to grow in Europe. We want to further to have the uh, uh, leverage from the alliance and therefore, regardless of the IPO whatsoever, we are looking at ampere and we would like to further to have a collaboration. And that's the reason why we are already uh, discussing about the ampere of our investment. And on top of that, we already have the vehicle that being promised to come from the ampere, which is very important for us to be sustainable to grow in Europe. So from that point, I have no doubt, okay? Uh, we are not in a financial company to talk about the IPO. I'm talking about the collaboration more with our partner. Uh, secondly, about your first question about the Honda. Uh, with the Honda is, we just started doing the feasibility study, okay? And uh, as I say that the Nissan's, one of the midterm plan is how we can, uh, if, as we want to be a global uh, player in the world, but the market is moving at a different paces, then how I can have the good uh, partnership further with their alliance, first of all. Then could I look for the, some other opportunity in some other market? Could be a one of the opportunity discussion. So these are what we are drawing as a strategy. And we're just trying to make our midterm plan to be something that makes ourselves to be global in each respective market that we are playing on to it. Maybe okay. to, uh, just to add a sorry. point, everybody understands that when each company uh, draws the future with some partners, every time it will benefit to the other company of the alliance, which is, means that the alliance is the center of this uh, system and then the companies reach some agreements with some other partners and they always, at the end of the day, benefit everybody. So that's the, that's the scheme. Thank you. Okay, uh, our uh, gentleman uh, colleague from Chennai Media. Anand from Hindu. I just want to know, uh, what is the time frame for uh, the launch of the new vehicles? Will it be simultaneous for Renault and Nissan? Will it be exported? Yeah, I think we, we can't, uh, let's say, we can't confirm that they launched it at no. this stage, uh, but it's not going to be, uh, you know, in, in five years, right? It's, it's uh, relatively, uh, let's say, we, we took the decision, it was announced uh, as an idea last year. We took the decision in the meantime. We had to do a lot of things to kind of rebalance, redesign the alliance. And now the now we are in the real, real work of development uh, of the car on, and finding the suppliers, et cetera, et cetera. So I can't confirm the date, but it's not yeah. going to be uh, an enormous time. For sure, uh, you might uh, you might see both brands, uh, you know, in the next, uh, uh, let's say, months uh, suffering because of a lack of uh, product offer. But that's what it is. We have to, it's even a, a further motivation for us to accelerate the project, to support our dealers here that have believed in us, and we will do. Um, so I would say, uh, you know, that's a first answer to, you know, uh, part of your question. You you ask, uh, as a, as an, w w what was the... No, I think his second question was the Renault Nissan, what, what is a different timing? Yeah, if they will no, I think no. we're going to try to get the cars, you know, as soon as possible for both brands. Yes. Uh, because both the dealer network, they need a new fr fresh product, yeah. right? That's, uh, that's for sure. Right? And uh, so, one of the priorities is the time to market. Yeah, we, uh, we actually develop them in parallel, basically. It's not in uh, sequentially. Uh, yes, you, we are all, it's also part of the story. Jude, CNBC. Jude Sanand from CNBC TV. I was just curious, question to both CEOs, by the way. I was just curious. What who, are, who, are, who, who first? Uh, yeah. You can go first, Luca. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> no, I leave it to you. Right. Just curious as to what you make of the Indian EV policy. Uh, will you be participating? And is there a case for EV imports, considering uh, an import duty cut is possibly on the cards? And is that an incentive for both of you? Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, you want me to start? Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. No, as Luca said, that we are studying a lot. How we can, uh, by, by the way, you know, the Renault, Nissan is one of the pioneers of the EV, and we have a many market to play with. So we do understand, um, of course, we need to, to understand how the uh, localization could be secure and what kind of the authorities uh, uh, rule or guide can be uh, considered. But we always uh, try to think how we can efficiently to come. But once we come, we have to be steady to how we can grow in this market. So we are in the discussion a lot about how we can make sure 
our electrified vehicle or you would like say EV uh, to be considered in this market? Importing what? The vehicle? Electric cars. Well, look, I think we, we have, uh, you know, technically, I guess this is possible, yeah. but then you have to look at all the taxation, etc. We have just, uh, you know, seen the structure of the regulation in one of the presentations from the local team. Uh, so we're, I'm, I'm not still deep enough into the subject to, to evaluate the, let's say, the competitiveness of the proposal that is making by, made by the author. So we have to study it deeper. But uh, I think one of, the, one of the schemes is that you are unable to uh, import cars if you find a commitment in future production, et cetera, et cetera. So this I cannot give you the answer because I haven't made the, the maths and I haven't, I haven't made the business case, right? Uh, I think we should see the things bigger. Reality is that any big OEM in the world uh, is investing tons of money and resources and sometimes they're obviously limited, okay? Um, to try to cope with uh, different region expectation in terms of energy transition. So there is a kind of a traffic jam worldwide. And for us, people that have to make decisions and run projects, it's a question of you know, trading off limited resources and assessing what to do first. Okay? And I think that you know, India is in the traffic. And I'm not telling you if it's in front of the traffic or, you know, or behind the traffic, but it's in competition with, with the other things. So, yeah. And for us, for, for us, the most reassuring, uh, let's say, things as uh, you know, business leaders is to actually clearly see a long-term approach, people that have means of their ambitions, and the strategy, and not only talking about regulation or subsidies. That's not enough, right? So um, we are very eager, I guess, Uchida-san also, but um, myself, to engage in a conversation with the different stakeholders here to see if there is a strategy that is very competitive. And uh, if there are arguments, why not? We know that we have to cope with, uh, you know, cafe regulation, with, uh, you know, fines, uh, potential fines, et cetera, et cetera. This happens in Europe, this happens in the U.S., it's everywhere. But uh, I don't think it's, it's uh, you know, from people like us, the only element and variable we have to look at. We have to look at the strategy because we are there to make business, to, to give to the customer what they want, what they can afford, and then uh, that's where we are. Does it answer to your question? Did you add something? No. Okay, we go to the online set of questions. Mr. Peter Campbell, Financial Times, next, please. Please unmute yourself with tech support and ask your question. Uh, good morning, chaps. Thank you very much for taking our questions. You talk a little bit about export potential from the plant. I mean, could you, for instance, export EVs to Europe to compete with other uh, low-cost imports to Europe? <laughs> and just one Follow up on the alliance as well, given it's been raised already. I mean, Nissan obviously has the Honda partnership, Renault has Ampere and, and Horse. Is this project in India now the kind of last chance to get a, a truly alliance project and venture that um, actually sees the two companies working well together? I can start with the second part of the question. Maybe you would like to, to complement. Uh, obviously, what you see here is the perfect example of what we look at the alliance in the future. As you know, we have reshaped the alliance uh, last year. We're now in a new era. And it, clearly, this era means that we are now working very, very strictly on operational issues, on operational projects, project by projects, country by country, region by region. And this is what we had in mind for years, actually. But for some reasons, we, didn't, we needed time to put that on paper and make sure that we all agree. And the reshaping of the alliance is now much more balanced, much more uh, you know, seamless uh, alliance that uh, we used to live in the past four or five years. So Ushida-san and Luka-san are here together just to witness the fact that we are working in this region on a very, very operational project that you have had the headlines with uh, these two gentlemen. So that's for the alliance. You have to wait for 
other projects of that type everywhere in the world. That be in Europe, in Latin America, in uh, everywhere. In India, of course, because we just detailed. But we took this opportunity to give you the perfect example of what we meant by the new era of the alliance. I think that clears the way for this future. Maybe, uh, Lucas, you, you would like to, uh, to bring up. Okay, so thank you, Peter. Uh, I might be repeating what I have said because, uh, of course, me and Luca, of course, under Mr. Sanao, we are discussing we cannot continue the past way of the process for the future. Uh, world is changing, market is changing, customers' perception is changing. That's the reason why we started to have the alliance, how we can elevate ourselves to the next stage, not being in a kind of a past way of doing, which may not meet the market expectation. So that was a whole discussion that we had for the past two years. And then where we are. Of course, Renault has to move on their father uh, body up, which is Ampere and horse. For us, we also have to have our body up for us to survive. And we had the same needs. And how we can further to discuss to make our alliance to be even much better by doing what way was a whole discussion. And I think we are very happy to be here physically in India to try to explain to you guys how we can further want to move the alliance in the India where we have the common way of the manufacturing and as well as a great NTPCI. We have a great asset of the people in this country who are not only for the India, but also supporting our operation worldwide and how we can use this asset to be even stronger. So these are the, all the substances that we are going to further to elaborate not only in India, but also the other our country that we are working together. Question from New Indian Express, Chennai. I'm Shiva Kumar. I uh, just wanted to know, like, how much, since you are planning to make Chennai. Hold the mic closer to your Hello. Yeah, hold yeah. the mic closer. Since uh, you are planning to make Chennai the hub for global, is it fine now? Yeah. So since you are planning to make Chennai as the hub, so what are your investment plans? Secondly, uh, the automation in the plant is only 12%. How you plan to further increase it? And uh, what are your uh, plans for the deep techno technologies and uh, what all other plans you have for the plant? Yeah, I'm going to answer that. I think I think we have uh, stated that the investment will be uh, around 600, 700 uh, um, million uh, dollars. Uh, so it's a kind of a substantial inv investment. Uh, it's actually, I would say, 25, 30 percent of what we have done, uh, you know, in, uh, in the last uh, 15 years, as uh, it was mentioned by you, Chiasan, before. We do it. We will do it in the in the next uh, two three years. So I think uh, it's a it's a big investment uh, for us. Uh, I think that for sure we'll ha we'll take the opportunity of the new um, let's say of the new platform localization to uh, try to um, uh, you know increase the sophistication of our, our manufacturing operations. Um, but you know. One of the advantage of Chennai is, uh, you know, the competence, uh, you know, and also the expertise now of our workforces, uh, and also the advantage in cost uh, that we have. So you normally try to automatize when uh, you have uh, labor forces that are very expensive, expensive, and uh, and that have a, you know a big churn, so that you cannot get the expertise there. We, we feel that, you know, from when you look at the numbers, we, we feel that there is a certain, you know, important loyalty of the workforces to, to, the, to the organization. Most of them are, you know, kind of a regular, you know, uh, regular workers. Uh, they have been with us. They have learned how to do things. So I don't want to let, you, let them down just for the pleasure of putting robots uh, left and right. Of course, if something has to be done, to improve the quality of the product, to you know maybe increase the speed, etc. But flexibility and cost competitiveness and frugality and ideas that these people are bringing are actually more, more important than automatization. On the, I think that on the other side, you know, you talk about deep tech. I have to say that I was very impressed by, you know, the size 
but also the uh, you know the enthusiasm and the energy and the motivation of the teams in uh, NTBCI. It's a big stuff. It's a uh, big stuff. And uh, so I think that what they are, they are only they have done a lot of things. They are already involved in many of the projects. We have been given them, you know, the full development of uh, you know of already of cars. Okay, of course they have been taking care in the past about a segment. That you don't you don't have to forget that, uh, you know, cars like Renault Five uh, were partially a big part developed here. Uh, cars with the next generation Copac TV from Nissan. A lot of work was done here, okay? Cars like the future Renault 4 that we will present in Paris this year, big part was done here. So these guys, they have, they through the process, they made a big step in experience, okay? And in connection with the rest of the system, both at Yokohama and, uh, and, and, uh, and with Paris, okay? Uh, and so, and we will continue to do that. And I saw, obviously, really the chance to involve them more and more in everything has to do with, you know, connectivity, man machine interfaces, uh, you know, uh, software. Uh, we have the whole team here, you know, also from the expert uh, of the company is there to discuss potential opportunities to get uh, NTBCI to be connected to the main projects of the company from our side. Uh, I'm sure that Uchiha san is doing the same. Uh, so, yeah, so the message is uh, this is NTBCI is starting to become one of, from a from an engineering point of view, from a technical point of view, one of the wheels of our system, right? Uh, and normally you don't have uh, 25 wheels on a car, right? So it's becoming a big part of our, uh, you know, a big part, a big pillar of our technical organization. The thing I can add is uh, I think myself and Luca and uh, Mr. Sanao re acknowledge the great asset we have in India. Uh, I mean, we went through the line today. Um, it was a very well balanced, and I think there's a lot of opportunity that we can foresee. And we have a great expertise of the people here in India, and this is a great asset that we have been building. So our job is how we can make sure to give the environment for those people to perform more than 100%. So that's the reason why we are going to commit to have a new product here in this country. That's why we are committing ourselves that we want to grow further in this country. And that was our decision and we came here to see with our eyes are back again and how we can further utilize our great asset here in India, not only for the India, but elsewhere. So I think that is a very strong message that we are saying here. And we really feel proud of our people who are dedicating for our operation in this country. Okay, Ketan Tucker, Autocar Group. Yeah, uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, the investment that you have planned, do you think it is too little too late? Uh, because the scale in India and the top players, Maruti, Suzuki, Hyundai and all, they have reached a completely different magnitude of scale. Combined, Renault Nissan Alliance does not even make up for 2% of the market. Uh, they are investing tens of billions of dollars for ICE and EVs. Uh, we are yet to see a billion dollar for the coming few years. How do you compete with the scale of large players of Indian market and still have your share? And an additional question to Uchida San, he spoke about the alliances globally. So is there a need for Renault Nissan Alliance to look at local partners for scale. There are many players, many Chinese players also you're looking for partners. So how do you compete? What's the rightful place for Renault Nissan in the Indian market? And how do you compete with the behemoths who are investing tens of billions of dollars in India? Thank you. Yeah. You Look, uh, you might be right, right? So maybe it's a subscale and probably, you know, somehow late. That, that That's what it is, right? So. The issue is uh, to do uh, the right things and now to do it, okay? We're not like uh, announcing that we would like to overtake uh, Maruti Suzuki in terms of market share. I, do, I think what we, you know, or, or, or even Tata, etc. these are big, uh, you know, boys here, right? And uh, uh, I think we just need to have our presence that justifies, um, you know, a sustainable business 
that justifies our presence with the plants, with, uh, with, uh, with the technical center, et cetera, et cetera. We are here to do the right job and maybe to try with our means to propose something to the Indian customers that they want first. And then maybe if we are good, that is also kind of different from what the, let's say, local players or other big players are proposing. Okay, so I think this is also a very important thing. We need to find our secret sauce. And that, you know, in the past, maybe the only thing we were focusing in was trying to get the cheapest possible car to get access to mobility. But the market is changing a lot, right? So we have to be a little bit more creative. Now, you have to also take into account that, you know, it might look, I mean, these are local players that do it for their domestic market. Like anybody would have, you know, have done. And I think about companies like Renault after, you know, in the 50s in Europe or Nissan, maybe, I don't know, in the 70s, in the 60s, 70s in Japan, they had to put a lot of money in there to create internal demand in their domestic market. This is what's happening here, right? Uh, I mean, if you look at uh, those players that they look so big to you from our side of the world, you know, maybe because of the distance, yeah, they might come, right, for sure. But so I think that what I want to say is that take example of the product that we're bringing. We are putting that money on the plate to adapt, to make a different design, to make a, maybe new software, to adapt a few things that are important here, to localize, to pay the entry ticket for suppliers, etc. But the platform is already there. It's already developed elsewhere. So behind those 600, 700 million, there are billions of investment done by Renault and by Nissan around the world. So look at the problem like this. Don't fix it on, you know, only the announcement I gave you. Okay, it makes sense? Yeah, but you know, look, I think that, uh, I think that, if, you know, if you say scale India on India, okay, probably, of course, compared to those big boys, we are, we are subscaled. We just have to do the right things, as I said, but the scale, we have it in general. I mean, you combine uh, uh, on, uh, take the example of the platform going to bring here. It's a platform that is uh, already now above the million uh, largely about a million cars in the world, localized in South America, Turkey, Romania, Morocco, okay, and now India. So this is one of the biggest scale platform on the planet. We just have to put, you know, the secret sauce here. Just gave away the model. Thank you. Eh? Just gave away the model. Thank you. I think, uh, you know, of course, uh, we need to show what kind of differentiation we can prove here in this market further. You know, in the past, maybe we have been a bit slow, maybe we have been a bit small, small but uh, elsewhere we also have our strengths as well. So now how we can bring those here and to have our presence to be something reasonably, sustainably to be global, and India is a great market, has a huge potential of the growth and how we can meet with that. If we cannot meet with that, if we are not willing to do that, we won't be sitting here. So therefore, it's kind of our college and commitment that here that we want to grow in India. Okay, sizable, maybe it's a bit different that challenge that we are talking about here, but we do have a lot of a great asset also from our brand side and Renault brand side, it's a great brand. And I, I'm, I'm sure many of the uh, customer here likes the uh, brand of the Nissan and Renault and how we can make sure to give that environment. I will repeat that back again. It is our job to give the environment here so that the people here can grow our brands to further to be present in this market. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Never underestimate the strength of this alliance worldwide. I think that's the comment. The, the automotive industry is full of cycles, you know. And this one here is a revival cycle for the Alliance presence in this country. You understand the huge assets we have here? We're not just going to let them go away. We have a tremendous presence potential here, so we're going to do it. Okay. Uh, Hema, yeah. please. Hema, ma'am. Yeah, hi. This is Hema here from DT Next. Uh, I, uh, we just held the Global Investors Meet uh, sometime, you know, recently. So there was this uh, view that uh, India actually should not focus on manufacturing and it should actually move to services. 
uh, as people in the manufacturing space, uh, what would be your call, uh, you know, because we are, it seems, you know, we are just concentrating, concentrating more on the assembly and the low-end kind of jobs rather than investing more on, you know, the higher technologies. And uh, we are actually uh, not doing justice to the uh, kind of uh, economic potential that we have. So as uh, those in the business, I would like to know because Chennai is supposed to be the automotive powerhouse. Uh, what do you make of this kind of a comment? And yeah, like what, I would like to know your views. I don't know if you were late or I didn't express myself uh, well, but actually my, my introduction was about RNTBCI, uh, which is our technical center. I repeat the thing two or three times. And uh, General Dominic was talking about 15,000 people in our perimeter without you know, all the partners, the indirect job that we're creating here, which I guess normally in the automotive industry is between one to six to one to nine. So you can count probably, I don't know, 100,000 people that are around our ecosystem. But on the 15, five are in the plants and 10 are in the technical center doing deep tech, uh, high tech, uh, uh, autonomous driving, cloud, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my answer to your question. We already see it. Uh, you want me to to fire all the people in the plant and to put uh, the I don't know what I, the sense of your I mean the world is not black and white right so we have to we, you you need to have a market manufacturing presence you need to bring product here uh, to uh, you know and then uh, also somehow to justify the fact that you have an engineering center right that can develop the cars here. It's part of their activity to develop cars. I think India is, you know, becoming a trend-setting technology, you know, country. So a lot of innovation and novelty will come from here. You got to be there. We can put it in our product. We can put in products outside of India. We can just invent new product, nothing to do with the product we we are distributing. You know. But we see it very clearly. And the proof is, and we actually probably saw it before the others, because the proof is, is that we have two thirds of the people in the technical center and one third in the plant. That's the best answer to your question. You would be surprised by the level of expertise of the people in this research center. I mean, when it comes to in artificial intelligence developments, I mean, we are, we are here at the very top level of expertise. So it's... Exactly. Okay, last question, Stefan Martin, online, please. Go ahead. <clears throat> Stefan Martin. Do you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, sorry. Uh, just one question because I don't understand the, the answer. Uh, and what about the possibility to export some products uh, from India to other country, maybe Europe? No, I'm, maybe, Stefan, we are already doing that. Huh? So especially Nissan is stronger than Renault at exporting because they have some good uh, access market, like for example, the Gulf countries, et cetera. Yeah, and yeah. South Africa, we are exporting a lot. And yeah. uh, as we uh, already explained that in our part of the midterm plan, we are planning to export 100,000 units from the, uh, from the, uh, this country to the uh, whole of our operation. Uh. Let's not forget okay. here that in India we have a great cost competitiveness, and, uh, which we had that historically, and we will further to utilize that for the future. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to just ask the broadcast media to come in the front quickly with their microphones, and we'll do a common bite for all three spokespersons with them. That will be a three-minute bite, after which the executives will leave first, and then the media will board their buses. So, Sumit, Mukda, and Jude, can you please get your cameras in the front? How are you, my friend? Nice to see you. Everybody else, please remain seated. Everybody else, please remain seated. Executives to exit the room first. 
Where you live? Only TV. This is only a broadcast. Okay.